Well, welcome, Chris, uh, to this edition of Minds and Money TV. Uh, Chris Gibbs, CEO of uh, American Rare Earths, ticker ARR, an exploration company helping the US and its supply chain uh, for rare earths. Welcome to MMTV, Chris. It's great to have you here. Great, great to be here, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you. Let's kick right off. Can you outline the projects you're currently working on and, and your priorities currently? OK, look, yeah, American Rare Earths, we, we have our flagship project in the heart of the United States. It's called the Hallett Creek Project. And look, the Hallett Creek Project is a uh, an outstanding project. It's in the rare earth space. And look, right, right now, one of the biggest problems facing the Western world, and in particular the United States, is how to onshore these critical materials. And we're talking here, you know, rare earths, which are neodymium, prosodymium. And currently, the majority of these rare earths are produced overseas. Um, majority, you know, well, the, there is one mine in the United States, but the processing is outside of the United States, so predominantly in China. And the US government is seeking to onshore these critical materials. And what we've got in, in the heart of the United States in Wyoming is the largest you know, resource in the ground. We've got a whopping jork resource of 2.34 billion tonnes. And you know, this thing's huge. And so that's what we've got in the heart of the United States. Now, we do have, have other projects. We've got another project in, uh, it's called La Paz, which is in Arizona, and also a project in Nevada, and also another project in Wyoming. And we've also got interests. We're a, a major shareholder in you know, Godolphin Resources, which has some projects here in Australia. But our flagship project is the Hallett Creek Project and it is in the heart of the United States. Wow, well, all of your projects are in the in the US. Um, can you expand a little on the support you get from your federal and your state governments? Um, and sure. do you see that changing in the foreseeable future? Sure, look, we, uh, we're very fortunate in that with our project, we are both on state and federal lands. And that, okay. yeah, that bodes well. And so from a permitting perspective, what that means is that particularly with state jurisdiction, it, it, it is a lot easier to uh, permit on state lands. So right now, you know, a portion of this deposit, we have already commenced that permitting process and that will take us less than two years. And we're working with the, uh, the, you know, the state folks here in, in Wyoming. But Wyoming itself is a very mining friendly jurisdiction. It is uh, rated, yeah, a better mining jurisdiction than yeah, anywhere really in Australia, even Western Australia. Um, and so uh, it's it's right up there, they're very uh, mining friendly. And yeah, in support of that, we've also received funding from the state of Wyoming, um, up to $10 million Australian, so that for every you know, dollar we spend, we get 50 cents back from the Wyoming government. Now, we also uh, yeah, yeah, have yeah, property on federal land, and we've also been getting yeah, various federal support um, yeah, through, yeah, this is partnerships we have with uh, R&D organisations. Um, but, you know, look, we, uh, we're also yeah, seeking to yeah, look at getting permitted you know, one day in the future on the federal lands, and there's a lot of support that yeah, we believe will be forthcoming from the uh, the government there. Um, but we've also got yeah, a letter of interest from the yeah, the XM Bank, which is the export import bank of okay. the United States, where their letter of uh, interest is yeah, to fund up to 100% of the capex for this project. And so that's huge. Um, now we still have to go through the due diligence, but we're also actively out there seeking other funding from the federal government, and. Yeah, your question was twofold. Yeah, how yeah. is the current situation? But how do yeah. we see that changing? Because the yeah, as we all know, the US politics. Um, but we see that very favourable for American rare earths. Num yeah, number one, we're in the heart of the United States in Wyoming, yeah. which is a Republican state. Um, one of the senators in Wyoming, a gentleman, you know, Senator John Barrasso, has been huge you know, advocate for mining industry reform. And he is uh, being appointed uh, into a key role within the Trump administration. And so we only see the support for, for the resource sector 
and also for our soil set American rare earths is only increasing yeah, under the new administration. And so we're, we're very excited about that as to what that holds for the future. And But uh, at the same time, we're working with the state and the federal folks, yeah. but uh, we, we see huge upside. And, and quite honestly, that's probably one of the biggest advantages for American rare earths is that we've got this, <laughs> the largest project yet in America in the rare earth space in the heart of yeah, one of the best mining jurisdictions and at a time where they desperately want to onshore these materials and not be reliant upon China. Yeah, no, it, and it's great. And I think it, it, it's testament to the importance of, you know, working in community, but very often that community does mean the political parties that are operational at that time. So, you know, communities mean different things to, di to different people, um, but obviously that's that's a consideration as well. And obviously, you know, a great a great opportunity by the sounds of things. No, no definitely. And, and look, the, the problem facing the United States has been recognised actually by both parties. So it's it's bipartisan. And, and that I think you know, people do need to remember um, because it, you know, th this is a problem the United States has faced for some time, which is these critical you know, materials have been produced overseas and it is a threat from both an economic and also national defence perspective. And that's that's what we have. Yeah, we've got yeah. in the ground this, this largest resource that can actually fund up to 100 years yeah. of the you know, the requirements for the United States. And so that's yeah, that, that, that's how big this thing is. Amazing. So with as an exploration company with a number of these identified resources, I mean, what are your immediate plans? I mean, what, what are you going to what are you doing next? <laughs> like what we're we doing next? We yeah. yeah we, we actually just announced some outstanding drill results you know, in the past week um, where we have seen you know, uh, yeah, essentially mineral yeah, mineralization over these yeah, I won't rattle off the, the numbers for you because they may not you know, make too much sense for those not in the rare earth game but now look we had outstanding drill results and intercepts that were going down um, to uh, yeah, well, we, we've drilled down here to like 300 meters and we've got uh, mineralization from surface to depth and that keeps on going and so yeah we uh, we've only essentially drilled about 16 percent of this deposit right. um, where we believe there's mineralization and we've already got a jork resource of 2.34 billion tons um, right now uh, the results of our most recent drill campaign we uh, pulling together the yeah, updated resource models and mine plans and we'll be coming out with uh, you know some news on that in the not so distant future. And that all that work will be then rolling into uh, a, a pre-feasibility study. And uh, we've already come out with a scoping study which showed outstanding economics, even at today's prices for rare earths. So uh, we're super excited to, yeah. Yeah, that we, yeah, we've got some work to do um, yeah. in that we need to uh, yeah, continue this work on the pre-feasibility and yeah, complete certain met metallurgical test work that we've got underway. Uh, but there is a lot of news flow and uh, a lot of information that will be coming forward to the market over the next coming months. Um, and, and the timing could not be more perfect, particularly yeah. with what's happening on the wider macro you know, situation yeah. within the United States. And that, that's what's exciting. Yeah. Um, now, the other thing that's going on behind the scenes is we also announced um, not only the XM Bank having a letter of interest, but the Bank of Montreal or BMO Capital mm -hmm. Markets. Um, we've engaged them to really you know, work with us on you know, seeking a strategic partner and adding value you know, to our shareholders. We, you know, we recognise that the market um, oh, really yeah, seeks to invest at the project level versus investing in an Australian junior. So uh, there's been a lot of interest in this project. So right now we've engaged BMO and they're working with us in terms of how we can actually bring in that strategic partner, or whether it's an, a JV or whether it's a, uh, yeah, a strategic investor or one of the major mining houses. And the reason for this is we you don't want to dilute our shareholders and we also want to fast track the development of this project. And so bringing in the right partner will make that happen. Now, we're normally too small for the likes of BMO, but 
um, you know, the, even the folks at BMO, what you know, their comment to us is that they see this project as a unicorn. And you know, I tend to agree with them. It, it's a rare project, just a size scale, yeah. where it's located, and it's, it's, it's just huge. And the timing could not be more perfect. Absolutely. You mentioned um, the, your, your current drilling campaign. Have you got any, and you, you've drilled 16% of the deposit, have you got any plans to drill uh, for any other drilling campaigns over the next sort of six months or so? Look, I, uh, I would like to uh, drill some more. I know some people say, well, you've already got 2.34 billion yeah. tons of resource. <laughs> but, um, but, well made. <laughs> yeah, but we, uh, we also uh, yeah, would like to... Uh, add to that um, and so yes we are looking at you know what it will take to do some more drilling but also uh, you know, through that you know, on some of this federal land is to uh, also be seeking you know, some higher grade material for the future um, so that's one thing we're taking a look at um, yeah i'll be over yeah, in the united states in the next couple of weeks talking with our team in wyoming as we pull together some of those plans for for next year um, but uh, yeah, so we uh, do plan on doing some more drilling, but the big thing we're focused on as well is really this pre-feasibility study. Um, yeah. We've already come out with some great economics, and so the yeah, plan is to come out with uh, yeah, that, that study and can, yeah, also yeah, get this permitting yeah, completed. Uh, we do believe we'll get this mine permitted in less than two years, and bringing in the right partner, we can fast track this thing and get it into production and start you know, generating returns for our shareholders in a uh, in a clip. So it's, yeah. it's pretty exciting. Absolutely. You mentioned, you, you've obviously mentioned the strategic partnerships and uh, who might come on board as well, but you mentioned earlier some R&D partnerships. I mean, how do you see those relationships playing out over the next couple of years? Will they be integral to the, the project moving forward? Look, they, uh, yeah, look, we, we've got some great partnerships in place with the uh, you know, the Lawrence Livermore Institute, Penn State, um, and a number of other universities in the United States. And look, the point I do want to make, though, is that we're moving this project forward using conventional technologies. And the, uh, the deposit lends itself to uh, yeah, a very straightforward yeah, crush grind, yeah, acid, yeah, acid leach at very low temperatures, and we don't need to uh, you know, use high temperatures to, to crack this. Um, and it then goes through to uh, yeah, separation of the rare earths. Um, so the existing technology works, but what we're also doing is we've partnered with some of these other R&D organisations where we've got funding from the federal government. And so we've got some of the smartest people in the world looking at new cleaner, greener and better ways and more cost effective ways to process and refine rare earths. And we're the only company yeah, who yeah, in this space that are working yeah, yeah, as an Australian junior explorer that working with these companies. And so yeah, this funding yeah, is happening. For example, I was sitting in, yeah, in the Ames Laboratory in yeah, Iowa mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, this was an amazing experience because you know, I recall sitting in, and we had about 18, you know, some of the smartest people in the world, you know, scientists, all talking about these you know, wonderful you know, technologies of processing, refining rare earths. Mm -hmm. And I recall looking around the room going, wow, you know, all these, you know, this has all been funded for and paid for by the United States government mm -hmm. to come up with these new and better ways to process rare earths. And there's a lot of work and a lot of dollars going into that space, and <laughs> we're in the mix. Um, and so that that will you know, give us a leg up from a uh, uh, well, from being involved. But they're using our ore, they're using mm -hmm. our material in all of their test work. So if any of this is successful, it will be transformational for mm -hmm. American rare earths and also transformational for the United States government who want to get ahead on the technology front in rare mm -hmm. earths. Um, yeah. We'll be able to do some catch up with the Chinese, um, but if you get a technology breakthrough, it will be truly transformational. How exciting. It sounds really exciting. Uh, <laughs> do you want to, before we wrap up, do you want to just give us um, an overview of your management team and then you know, why should our investors be looking at American rare earths? Your, your final pitch. 
<laughs> final pitch. Okay, we, we've got a great team on the ground in the United States. Um, our wholly owned subsidiary there, you know, Wyoming Rare, is led by a guy, Joe Evers. And uh, Joe is you know, extremely well known in Wyoming, very well connected. And he, uh, you know, a great leader. We could not you know, wish to have a better leader in place. And we've got a technical team with uh, you know, Dwight Kinnis, um, who's our you know, chief technical officer. And we've got uh, you know, you know, some of the best people who we've tapped into from a uh, consulting perspective you know, as well, who's supporting this. And you know, people that have you know, worked in the rare earth game for a number of years. And so we're you know, tapping you know, into some of the best consultants that we can use. Um, so uh, yeah, a great team on the ground in the United States. And, and look, yeah, just from a you know, pitch perspective, yeah, what, what we've uncovered here yeah, in Wyoming yeah, is essentially you know, the largest rare earth resource of this kind. Um, and uh, it, it's a massive deposit. Um, these minerals are essential to the, uh, you know, what's required for the United States. And as I said before, currently the you know, majority of these minerals are being processed overseas, um, in particular in China. And the US government is seeking to onshore these critical materials. And here you've got American rare earths with the largest resource with you know, outstanding grades and you know, with huge upside potential um, right in the heart of the United States. You know, this project is not in Africa, it's not in Australia, it's not in Brazil. It is right in the heart of the United States and in a mining jurisdiction that is already you know, putting its yeah, support behind this project through funding and through uh, yeah, through other support. And so uh, yeah, we, we're super excited that our timing could not be better to be moving this project forward. And then we've got the support of organisations like the XM Bank, yeah, BMO, and uh, yeah, other folks. So yeah, I'm looking forward to 2025 because I believe it will be a transformational year for American rare earths. And on that note, I thank you for your time, Chris. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, the, if nobody's excited about this project, then obviously there's there's something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you, Kimberly, and uh, look forward to talking again soon. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris.